Hey pilots, you know, if you're like me, you want to know the temperature of your engine cylinders for your fuel powered planes. Well, in today's video, I'm going to install the Spectrum temperature sensor, which is a thermistor. I'm going to show you how to modify the cable and then set it up in the telemetry on your transmitter. So sit back and let's do this. So, I guess this is take two. Yeah. We tried this once and we're going to try to film this again um, because it is a little bit of a, a puzzle. So what I have here is uh, my Sato 60cc twin uh, cylinder engine. And while I was trying to tune this, uh, trying to get the RPM up, I'm trying to figure out on the fly what the temperature is, what the RPM is. And so I'm using my new IX20 uh, transmitter and I don't have telemetry information coming from the heat of the cylinder. So I don't know if it's getting you know, hot enough or too hot, whatever it is. So what I did is I bought one, actually I bought two. We won't talk about the other one yet, but <laughs> we'll get to that. So we bought one of these uh, sensors and the problem that I have with this sensor is uh, it works great but the problem is is that it's too short and the other issue problem number two is to get it around the cylinder head and stick them down in these flutes you have to get past these push rods so it has to be opened up and then you wrap it around it has to reconnect and then go down in and then it has to go all the way down and route through underneath the belly all the way to, you can go to the other side if you want, to this compartment under here where the receiver is. And these only come at about 20 inches long, so that's not, an, that's not long enough to get where we need. So in the other video that we were working on, we'll just use the scrap <laughs> footage of that to show you that we actually took uh, the shrink tube off to see what was underneath there and it is a thermistor. And the way the thermistor works is, is that it's picking up voltage. The receiver is sending out voltage through the sensor port and it takes a measurement based on the resistance of the thermistor, which has got different materials in there that will uh, react when heat is applied and it gives more resistance or less if it cools down, whatever. And it allows you to get information. So. We tested uh, by cutting it apart, soldering it together, and we made one critical mistake. I made a mistake. Oh no. I didn't think about it. We used solder, a good old uh, Minitronics uh, solder, and this solder has a 374 uh, Fahrenheit melting point. <laughs> Not going to be great if you're putting that on an engine head. <laughs> Now, I don't know exactly from experience yet just how hot these things can get, but I'm not willing to take a chance. Um, the other thing that I found was that when I wrapped this around the head and trying to get it to stay there, they give you these little rubber tubes on here, right there, and you just push those taunt and it wraps around and holds it. Well, it didn't really hold it that well, so what I, I found another way, and I wanna show you how I did that to hold it all in place. Um, and it requires uh, putting a little bit more of uh, shrink tubing on it when we go to do that. And we're going to use these on both ends so nobody can plug a battery into the receiver. So that means that we're going to need to make a um, extension that has the male ends on both ends. So we'll get to that in a minute. I want to keep as much of this, this wire here as possible for the cylinder head because it's a higher temp melting point, you know, um, covering on this wire. So we want to keep that. But I don't have the crimps. If you do, you can just, you know, skip this part and you can just take that off and, you know, make your extension. But I don't have one of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it right about there. And I'm going to put my own 
servo end connections on there. This is the part that goes into the radio. And for this, we're just going to put on a connector like this on both ends. Now, I'm gonna shove this in there. It only goes one way. I have these little teeth that lock in there. And the top part here connects in. Okay, so now what we've created is an impossibility for these two to connect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a cable that connects this way and this way. That's it. Now, it works. Okay, pork chops. We're gonna run a little experiment here. And what I wanna to do today is I wanna take and see at what point this thermocouple wire melts. I have a soldering iron here that can go up to 899 degrees. So we're starting off with about 300 degrees and I'm taking my thermocouple wire here and I'm gonna just put it on there and see if she starts to melt at all. 500 degrees. Nothing. There it is. There we go. Look at the black. It's failing now. There's some black on there. Look at that. So at 800 degrees, it failed at 800. Right there it is. So we now know it's 800. That's where it fails. So I would feel comfortable with that touching the cylinder head at anywhere between four and 500 degrees, not gonna melt. This puts out a voltage into here and it reads the difference in the resistor's voltage coming back based on the heat transferring through the materials in the thermistor. So this is the point in the video where I totally screwed up. I should have showed you this is where the temperature sensor gets plugged into your temperature port on your receiver. Now you'll need to have a receiver like the AR10360T that has that port. So that answers my question, it is like a mister. We'll go into here to telemetry gauge panel setup. Let's just make a new one. We're gonna call this one heat. Or temperature. Temp gauge, okay. And we're gonna use the one screen for the whole thing. <coughs> Engine. Temp. And we're looking for the temperature sensor on the port. And <coughs> we can choose these patterns that they have established so we're going to just choose that one and then the range <clears throat> let's put it in there from um, I don't know 70, between 70 and 200 I now have a screen like this from that's up here um, on temp and it's minimally sitting I guess it I guess that right because I set it at 70 and sitting at 72 right now just sitting here and I probably could warm it up a little bit just with my fingers, like that. See, it's heating up. And see, it's going up pretty quick. Get a wide shot of me doing both of these. Yep. So you can see I need to set the range hotter than, or longer than 200. So I'm, I've got the thermistor. Um, mounted on the cylinder head. Now, I've had different people tell me how to do it in different ways for different reasons, and I chose to do it this way. And from what I've read and heard from different people, some people like to put it right over top the spark plug. Other people mount it in the top of the head, and some people put it around the uh, fluting um, fins of the 
engine cylinder head. So what I've done is I've chosen to put it at the topmost part of the cylinder head that comes closest. I don't know if you can see that in there, but here is the spark plug right here. And the th actual thermistor is right there. And it's on the back side of the cylinder, so the wind is not cooling it down. The, it should maintain the heat. And it's closest to the spark plug as I can get it. On this particular model, there's nowhere for the thermistor to wrap around the spark plug without putting it on there and smashing the cover over it. And I really didn't want to do that. So even if it's off a few degrees, it's not going to be, you know, it would be just marginally different if you had it on the cap. It's not going to be that much more. I did check this with a heat gun earlier when it was running and pointing it in different spots. It was only like one or two degrees different. So um, anyway, what I found also is I'm going to set my transmitter um, the scale for it, I'm going to put the scale at uh, 70 degrees all the way up to 300 degrees. Um, I've heard from various people that your engine shouldn't go like 400 or it's going to go berserk or weld itself shut. And, you know, 200, 210, 220 degrees should be, uh, for this particular engine, should be right on the mark of where the heat should, you know, get hot and uh, so basically, <clears throat> this is going to allow me to monitor <clears throat> my heat and um, tune it well and make sure that I'm putting in the correct amount of oil and so forth. I am doing, in this engine, not really relevant to this video, but I'm running a 20 to 1 mix in this and the break-in fuel was 15 to 1. So I kind of am interested to see, by using this, to see when I run the different fuels in it, I, I can see you know, if there's actually a difference in running temperature. Um, there's so many variables uh, to engine temperature, you know, from what it is outside, the oil, if you're on the ground, you know, static, running it, um, or if you're in the air and it's under load. And it'd be, so it'll be interesting, and I, I'm going to get that data and, and uh, hopefully be able to tune this and get the RPM that I'm looking for out of it. I have not been able to get it up to the full 7200 RPM that the manual claims. So I'm trying different propellers, but one of the things uh, that has been uh, betwixt me here is the actual engine temperature. So now, as I said before, we're going to be able to run this in flight and see the actual uh, temperatures. I'm going to flip on just the radio here, and you should see, right now it's not sunk up, but when I turn this on, you can see it's starting to sink up, and now there's everything. Watch the heat go up now. There you have it. So see how it's dropping pretty quick? Yeah. <laughs> that engine's absorbing that heat back, but you can imagine when it's running, the whole thing's nice and hot and stuff. Yeah. It works pretty good. I like it. I really do like it. So basically for these, you know, uh, these th thermocouples, the misters, whatever you want to call them, they're the heat sensor. Um, basically, you're going to just want to modify them for bigger ones. And in this video, the whole purpose of this video is to show you that that is possible. It works fine. And I'm interested to know everybody's feedback on not just this, but the placement of these uh, sensors, you know, the, where they've had good luck, where they've, you know, found that it was a challenge or or whatnot. So leave your comments below and um, you know let me know what you think and I uh, really appreciate uh, if you like and subscribe. And uh, we have some links in the below in the description for the different things that we have here for like the sensor. Um, and if you want to click on that link, it's an affiliate link and it'll take you to um, the website and it gives us credit for you know sending you there and it helps us out. So if you do me a favor, go ahead and click in those links, check out the devices, it really helps us out. Thanks a lot, and uh, talk to you later.